Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome to Open TTD tutorial number one. Now, in this tutorial, we'll be looking at getting and installing the game. We'll be looking at the different options in the game and the different difficulty settings, and then we'll look at the different ways you can start a game. Now, what we have here in front of us is the OpenTTD.org website. I'll put a link in the description. And on this site, there's various different information about the game. There's the news, the development, uh, screenshots, and things like that. But what we're looking for is the download option, which is here on the main page. Download OpenTTD. We'll click that, and it takes us to the download page. Now, there's some information about downloading the game and installing open source graphics and so forth. We'll get to that later. But what we'll do, we'll just scroll down here to the latest stable. So... Choose your operating system and choose your options and then click the installer. Save the file on your computer, save it somewhere where you're going to know where it is. Uh, it won't take too long to download and once it does you'll have the installer file like this. Click open and run that and you will get the launcher like this. Now this will go through the different settings and this is where at choose components you need to look at those graphic settings. If you have the original CD for Transport Taken Deluxe, you can copy the sound graphics and music files from that CD so you can play Open TTD with the Transport Tycoon Deluxe sounds, music, and graphics. Now, most people won't have that, so you need to leave the settings just how they are here to download the open source graphics, sound, and music. So, if that's like it is there, leave it as it is and then go ahead and click Next. Choose where you want to install it and then next and install. Not going to do that, I already have it installed. But once you have installed, you'll have an icon on the desktop, a shortcut to the game, and also a folder will be created like this. And in that folder, there's also the executable to the game, which you can click to run. And when the game starts, you will have something that looks like this. Um, First things first, let's have a closer look at different aspects of this. Now, I'm going to start in game options. You'll want to get the game's options. These are the primary options that you'll need to use. Now, you, here you can set up your currency and which side you drive on and your, your measuring units and the town names. You can have lots of different types of languages and so forth. You can also set your language and the format of the screenshots. In here is also where you can sort out your screen resolution. As you can see, there's lots of different options. And you can also resize the window to any size you like. Then you can also use the full screen option, but I'm recording um, in uh, 720, so you can see this nice and clearly, hopefully. Um, so I'm not using that today. Uh, the next options are your sound, uh, sorry, your graphics, sound, and music sets. Now, here you can see I have the open graphics um, selected, and the open sound, and the open music. Now, that's all you'll have the options for after you've installed, however you can get more. If we close the game options and go to check online content, we get a big list of different content that you can download. In here, there's a massive array of scenarios, maps, different AI, different things. Um, but also, there's the core items that you might need. For example, you've got the base graphics here, uh, you've got the base music and so forth that we've already got, and this is another bit of music that I downloaded. So if you wanted to put different music in, for example, let's choose this music, okay, tick the box, and when you've ticked the box, you can click download. And it shouldn't take too long, depending on how good your internet connection is, but there it is. Once that's downloaded, you can go into your game options, and you can see that it's an option down here now. Um, we've got um, the, the, the three different music options that I've got downloaded. Um, but I'm not going to actually switch that, I'm going to leave it on the open music. And you can do the same with the graphics. So check online content, go to whatever graphics you want to do, I'm just going to go to these base graphics. Uh, I'm going to tick on uh, Zbase, make sure we've got that downloaded, the latest version. And if this is quite a big file, you can see it can take a while. Uh, these graphics are quite uh, large. Now, uh, I'm not going to download them right now. Uh, I do already have a, a slightly older version of the Zbase graphics installed, so you can see you can change that there. 
closure options and new graphics. So that's all about the different graphics um, and sound that you can download and uh, all the settings you can change in the game options. Uh, there's also other things you can do in the online content. Um, lots of stuff you can play around with and insert in there, but we won't go into too much further detail about that at this stage. A lot of them are also involved in the AI and, green, uh, and uh, scripts configuration, and when you're starting out in this game, you won't want to go in here and change any of this. You should just leave that how it is for now. The high score table is somewhere you can have a look at to see what um, what people on this computer has reached uh, 2051. As you can see, I've reached 2051 once, and there I am, top of the leaderboard. And that was my first Let's Play series. So if you want to check that out, uh, look at my channel and look for my Let's Play series. Uh, I'm just going to click to get out of that. Uh, and that's pretty much all our main options down here, except the advanced settings. At first you might not want to go into the advanced settings, but let's take a little look. If you go into the advanced settings, you can see that it's divided up into various different categories. You can expand each category to have a look at the different options, and some categories have internal subcategories with lots of different options. If I click down here and expand all and scroll down the list, you can see there's an extensive amount of different settings that you can play around with. Now pretty much all of these are exactly how you want them to be when you uh, when you play the game. You might want to change some of them, and we might discuss some of them throughout the tutorials. However, for the most part, you don't really want to do much more than leave them as they are. As you can see, you can change a lot of the display settings. You can uh, change a lot of the uh, um, interaction on the screen, so you can change the snap radius, uh, you can do scrolling and zooming. You can change the different sound effects that you can get rid of. You can um, just uh, turn different ones off and different ones on so you can get rid of the news ticker beepy noise that happens if you wish. You can also adjust all the different messages you get whether you get them from different companies about uh, different things happening and there is a vast number of different options about that. Also construction whether you uh, show the signals on the driving side um, there's different uh, options in the uh, for the path signals, uh, automatically builds uh, different signals before 1950. There is a fantastic amount of different things in here. So, like I said before, not going to go into each and every option in detail at the moment. We will mention them in the tutorial as they're relevant, but for a large amount of it, you will want to keep it the same. All these options are pretty damn good for exactly how you want to get on. So let's just close the advanced settings for now. And uh, next thing we'll look at is uh, there's a multiplayer button here. I'll go into more about how to do multiplayer games later, but if you want to do that, that is where the options are, multiplayer. There is also a scenario editor in the game. I'm not going to load it just now. We'll do a separate tutorial about the scenario editor. But um, you can click that and create your own maps. If you want to uh, play one of your creative maps, you need to click Play Scenario, and there is an option to play Height Map, which you can download through the advanced, uh, sorry, through the Check Online content. Here you see your four different types of uh, area that you can go to. You've got a nice uh, general type of tree, land, and sea one. You've got a, a very cold and frosty one. You've got a desert one and a toy town one, but uh, we'll probably look at them a little bit later. So from there on, you've got your uh, last two options, your new game and load game. I don't think I really need to tell you too much about what those two buttons do. But let's go into new game, and it brings up an extra option here. You can, you can choose those four settings again. You can choose your four different game types. You can change your map size. Um, in the original game, it used to be very small, but now you can get very large. In this particular version, you can go up to 2,000 by 2,000 squares, and in the new 1.4 version you can go up to 4,000 squares, which is a phenomenal size. For most games, I reckon, recommend 512 by 512. Even if you're playing multiplayer, you can get a, quite a few of you on the map for quite a good game on there, and that will last a day or two. If you want to have a big long game, then you might want to bump, bump that up to one, uh, 1024. Your start date uh, you can start whenever you like, but if you start in uh, 1960, you're starting about 10 years before diesel trains coming, which allows you to play around with steam for a while, I believe. 
or is it 10 years before I think that's 10 years before electric and you can find out when the different vehicles come into effect on the wiki if you're not sure what date to start uh, if you're completely not st sure what date to start I recommend either 1950 or 1960 then all the options down the left hand side here in the middle section are pretty much uh, self-explanatory number of towns how many towns there are terrain type is whether how flat the land is if you want it mountainous very flat hilly um, it tells you how steep the changes in the land you can either sea level different height in there and also different options and the smoothness will tell you how sharply the land changes whether you step up gently or whether it just goes straight up into the sky you've got your seed in there which you can enter or randomize and you can also change the rivers and the different what's around the map edges so we can do water around the edge or freefall which can be anything depending on the generation and the last thing to do is generate the game and in you go and you can play a lovely game of open TTD well that's all for now uh, we will look at playing the game and how to do orders and how to make vehicles and lay track and the roads and all that in future tutorials but for now that's all thank you very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed this episode if it's been useful remember to give it a like and until I see you next time goodbye